Hey, everybody, we're here. A new episode, Five for Talking. I guess this is a Leafs edition uh, because Caps is here and he's the Leafs guy, captain of the Leafs. Uh, they call him Matt Sundin of the Leafs because he's the greatest Leaf of all time. Definitely not Wendell Clark. And uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Okay, uh, let's go. What do, you, what do you got to say? I know you got some stuff over there. <clears throat> um, so Tavares has been skating, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, the nasty injury that happened in the first round. Um, so it looks like he's coming along well and should be ready for the start of the season. Um, unfortunate event uh, where Matthews was skating and working out with the team and uh, eventually had to get wrist surgery and he's going to be out for six weeks. Um, I'm pretty sure he could have done this a couple of months ago. I get Maybe it. A month ago. I, I get uh, it, but like, he's going to be back. Yeah, but uh, I, I just fear that he's, uh, he's going to miss out camp training camp and he won't be ready to like maybe later on in comparison to the rest of his teammates. Um, but uh, it's crazy because uh, I know he was nursing or trying to play through that injury last season. And I just like, I was thinking to myself, just like Frederick, Frederick Anderson, they're in first place. Why keep playing, you know, heal it up, come back. And then just, you know, they'll be able to um, play as if they are not hurt. Uh, but they decided to um, make it worse for themselves. And uh, here we are. So yeah. I don't know if you want to comment on that. And, uh, and then the next thing we'll guess we'll talk about is the, uh, our line projections. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to say for sure whether or not um... – they knew he had to have it or he knew he had to have it or they were prepared to have it. But for me, I don't think this is that much of a detriment. I feel like this is a good thing. Um, let him have the surgery. It's fine. He's going to be back in time for the season. He's going to make it back. So let's just hope that surgery goes well and everything wrist-wise is, is working properly. Well, he already had the surgery. He said that it went well. Now we, just but we don't know how wait the... to see. Yeah, exactly. yeah, wait to see for his recovery. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if you want to comment on the Tavares thing. Uh, I mean, um, obviously, I don't want people to get hurt. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to see that he's back and well. Uh, I mean, it's hard for me to comment. I feel like we're paying him so much money. We need him to come back. As far as is he going to be able to contribute like he did in season one with the Leafs? I don't know. Hopefully, because I don't want the other two seasons of John Tavares back. Uh, he was playing well last season towards the end. He was definitely, I don't know, he said that he changed sticks and he was doing something a little different with his shot. And it seemed like it was working well and, you know, uh, they were poised to do well, and unfortunately, that, that incident happened. Um, if we can get the Tavares that was playing in the latter part of last season, great. Uh, I know I agree with you. There was a season and a half where he wasn't playing all that well, but um, you know, I, I believe that he could play well and contribute to this team a lot. Um, I think we can pretty much guarantee or agree upon our defensive lineups for next season. And as a side note, or actually as a side question, who do you think starts next season? Do you think it's for Isaac or do you think it's Campbell? I think it's Campbell. Yeah. I okay. think like, uh, just uh, let me touch on that quickly. Yeah. I know we talked about it before, but like, I still feel like with a guy who we know has, has confidence issues in Campbell and is very hard on himself. You gave him the boost. You you showed him you're the number one guy. You're our guy. We're going to ride you. And then you went out, grabbed another guy, and said, now you're going to split the season with this guy. And I just don't like that. I mean, I get it. It maybe is the, the pitcher in the first inning of a baseball game thing that they did for the last two years before they made the rule change um, type of situation where it's a new ball game now. We got to try new things. They split seasons. Okay, great. But I feel like it, it might affect his confidence. 
I think they're going to help each other out. I really do. I think they're going to. I hope push, so. I think they're going to push each other. Um, they both have great numbers, and I think yeah. they're both going to contribute. And I think they're. Yeah, I really do think they're going to push each other. Well, I, the one um, thing I just want to see, I, I want Mrazic to get more consistent because if you see his career numbers, they're not bad or anything. But he, if you have seen his like in between season breakdowns, he's wildly inconsistent. Yeah, yeah, he's got a nine uh, 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 0.928 uh, save percentage, if I remember correctly, which is really really good. Um, so he could do it. He could definitely do it. He has the um, skill. No. <clears throat> um, before we head over to the forwards, I'm still going to say the same thing I said uh, in our last episode. I still feel uh, Bogosian is going to be a huge hole to fill, um, and I don't think it'll be filled by Dermot. So I'm just saying, putting that out there, I think Sandin's a great player. He's just not the type of player that we need in terms of um, yeah. hitting and shutting down the opposition. He, or at least he's not all the way there yet. Yeah. He's not and, there yet. And I don't have faith in Dermot. I just absolutely don't. No, I don't. Um, I don't. So between those two guys, I'm kind of iffy. I, I mean, I trust Muzzin. I really trust uh, Muzzin and uh, what's his name that we got last year? Brody. And Brody. I, I'm not a Hall fan. I think when you take Hall away from Muzzin, he doesn't play well. As soon as you 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 take him away from that, he's not the same guy. So he's is it – The other way around. You take Muzzin away from Hall. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, he doesn't – I have more faith in him than I do with Dermot or Sandine. I think Sandine shows that he could be one of our best defensemen, maybe the best defenseman, but he's not there yet. No. Uh, and uh, I, Hall scares me. Like I said, when you, when he's not playing with Muzzin, he doesn't even look close to the same player, but Brody, I, I'm loving Brody. I'm loving what Muzzin's doing. Um, Riley has the offensive ability and he has the, experience now to know what to do and what not to do. My question is, is he still going to make the same mistakes? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think they played well last season, uh, Riley and, and Brody. I think they um, did their part. They played a lot, uh, especially when Bogosian was out. Um, but you could tell um, you could tell that uh, there was a lot of consistency with the defensive corps last season. They played well. They were able to get there together. And uh, it was just, um, you know, the defensive pairings worked out very well. I still feel that, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, Muzzin, excuse me, I don't think Sandine and Dermot are able to fill in uh, Bogosian's um, no. uh, shoes. No, uh, I point. would like them to bring in some sort of veteran defenseman that is physical. And is not a liability on the defensive end because that's we're gonna need that. You can't have Dermot, Sandine, and Hall all in the lineup at the same time. There's no way. No. All right. Uh, projection, projective uh, lineup for uh, our forwards, our forwards. I think they belong to us. They uh, do. At least lineup, yeah, for next season. Um, you want to go for it or do you want me to do mine or how do you want to do this? You go, you can do yours. Okay. All right. First line. It's uh, I'm going to put Richie Matthews and Marner. All right. What do you think yours is? For my first line, mm -hmm. I would say it's probably Richie Matthews and Marner. Yeah. This one, uh, the second line was pretty difficult. Um, I'm putting Mikheyev, Tar Tavares, and Nylander. And okay. there's a reason why I'm putting Mikheyev on the second line. I believe that this is his last season with the Leafs. And if he doesn't get his uh, – uh, if he doesn't get going, it's – it's. I think they're going to let him go pretty much. So I think they're trying to get him going. And pairing him up with uh, Tavares and Nylander gives him a chance to really prove himself this season. So um... – I kind of have like a mixed third line, second line. So why don't you do your third line and then I'll do my second and third. Okay. Uh, my third line, Kerfoot, Kent, and um, oh my gosh, what's his name? Kashe. Yeah. Okay. That's so my third line. 
this is my third line. Uh, my second third line, sorry. Um, I would like to have Tavares and Nylander for sure on the second line. And I would like to have Kerfoot and... Um, Oh my god, I forgot his name. Kerfoot and Kasha on the second line. And uh my thing is I'm kind of torn here between putting Robertson and and um Makayev either on the second or the third. Like I, I can go either way with both. I think he needs to be in the lineup. I absolutely do not want Michael Bunting in the lineup. Why is that? Because he's not done anything ever. What are we basing his career on? I, we know that Robertson has talent. Yeah. Um... Right? I'm not saying it to you. Sorry. I'm just, I meant that in no, general. No, it's fine. I, I have Bunting in my lineup because there's a lot of upside with Bunting. And uh, Robertson, to me, does not, I don't think Robertson is will be able to contribute a lot on the third line. He, he's a top six forward to me. But that's what I mean. I could, you can interchange Makayev or him. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, I feel like that's going to happen a lot this season. Yeah. You're going to see a bunch of guys flopping in and out. Um, I, I feel know, like the piece yeah. that the second line is missing is a talent piece. That's why I'm saying Makayev or Robertson. Yeah. That they're missing <clears throat> the first line needs to have a grittier type of player playing with them that can still like help them. But the third, the second line needs to have like another skill guy with Tavares and Nylander. That's just how I see it. And that's why I put Mikheyev up there. Because yeah. yeah. So like, like he I, can contribute if he's, but I feel like Mikhe- Mikheyev Kerfoot, and Kasha is a strong third line. Like I, yeah. I kind of, uh, that's why I'm kind of iffy on that. What's your fourth line? Bunting, Spetsa, and Simmons. All right. So mine is uh, Simmons, Camp, and uh, Spetsa. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, that, I, that I, line is gritty as hell and it's really strong defensively. If, I don't so. see Simmons as a very defensive. He, he could play defensively, man. He's not it's, like. He's not like an elite level defensive player, but there's no way it, when you're looking at the Leafs roster that you're not going to say he's not one of the better on the the defensive end. And he'll hit and he can <clears throat> score. Um, it's a shutdown. I, I know, I know, I know he could score and I know he can hit, but like you want guys that can play defense. That's, that's the thing. Um, and that's who's, a, why who's got... a better defender than him on the Leafs. See, that's the thing. Like, because of the, the guys that we, they picked up, we just – we're not really sure. We're, they are advertised as two-way forwards. I um, mean, Richie's Bunting, not strong. Uh, Camp. Uh, I'm not saying Richie. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely yeah. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying I'm, that. I'm talking about Camp. I'm talking about Bunting. They, they're advertised as two-way Well, Camp on paper, that's why I have him on the fourth line. Yeah. And because you're going to need him a lot on your penalty kill, so you don't want him taking a lot of minutes on his actual line. Um, he on paper has no doubt the best two way player on the Leafs. Now he, he came in, his record speaks for itself, what he can do on the defensive end. Um, Spezza contributes and he's there with all of his heart. So I'm good with that for him being on my fourth line and bunting. Like this is my issue with bunting. No matter what you look at for him, there's no record of him being able to do anything that Kyle Dubas thinks he's going to do. You, we've never seen him do good offensively or defensively. His stats don't speak for anything. So, like, my that's my issue with him. It's not – if you think he's going to do good, I trust you to believe that. But I just – I'm just basing it on what has been advertised to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that he does. For me, I mean, I'm taking him out of the lineup and I'm putting in Robertson. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of interchanging – uh, players here. You're going to see Bunting coming in and out, I believe. Yeah, he, him and Robertson, Robertson are going to be a revolving door. Yeah, you're going to see Robertson going in. I think they've given up on Engvall. I really do. I think he was playing better, but for a guy his size, I feel as though he could do so much more. Yeah, I agree and with you. He had flashes of really good, but he, he just kind of stopped out of nowhere at one point and like he was scoring like towards the end of the season, but to me, like a guy that's six foot five, like he should be hitting guys. He should be he should be overpowering guys. He should be he he 
to me, it's disappointing. I'm really actually disappointed I mean, in him. I'm not going to expect him just to hit people just because he's big, but I do agree with you on the fact that for his size compared to some of the other players that he was matched up against, he kind of like dodges people like instead of just like pushing the guy against the boards or like digging for the puck he'll just avoid the whole situation and go to the front of the net you know what i mean no but i mean i, I see curtis gabriel getting some playing time as yeah, well as well as the other i i don't remember his name there's another really big guy that played pretty well hmm. i don't know but the 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 potential last oh, like spot for the Leafs, there's four or five guys that are going to be just a revolving door coming in and out. And to be honest with you, I think it's a pretty decent list. Like, I don't mind having Michael Bunting on the team. I'm not saying this guy is a bad player. I'm just saying I don't have any data to suggest otherwise that he's good or bad. There's just nothing there. Yeah. I think, um, I think, Dubas's goal this season was to try and find a couple guys to replace Hyman, but I think he really went out to try and find a third line shutdown line. Yeah, I think that I, was the biggest goal. I think that's what he was really. Cam doesn't to do. have the offensive ability to be on a third line, in my opinion. He 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 struggles terribly on the offensive end. In his, I don't think seasons. they cared. I don't think that this is what they but were I trying mean, to do. To me, that's why you fourth line him because you save his minutes for the penalty kill. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm just the way I yeah. see it. Like, it, just because I I call it a third line does not necessarily mean it's a third line. You can just bounce, yeah. it, bounce Like it, I said, uh, your line, your line and third line back and forth. Your team is basically the same as mine. The only thing I really truly disagree on is I would have Robertson in the lineup. I feel like, yeah. but but I mean, otherwise our team is almost exactly the same. Pretty much. I, I mean, I would really have Robertson in, but just based on what happened last season, even yeah. after, like, he was playing well, and then he got injured, and he was never the same after that. Yeah, and, and I, I think I, you I, have I just, to... Go, go. No, no, please, go ahead. I just think you have to have Richie on the first line. Like, he he is so catered to be on that line that it's crazy. He's like, yeah. if, if Zach Hyman could score 25 goals, like, on his own without someone <laughs> shooting the puck off his head... He, like, that's Nick Ritchie. Ritchie's role next season is to protect Matthews and Marner and hunt down pucks and get the puck to those guys. And the that's good, the bonus of him is he can score on his own. He could take the puck and score a goal. So and, good. And, and the other thing, uh, the biggest obstacle for Ritchie is he needs to be more disciplined mm -hmm. and not take stupid penalties. Yes, 100%. That's just going to be his biggest, biggest goal next season. He, he's had that problem for his entire career so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's pretty much all I have. I mean, I, I'm looking at it on paper. Like, these four, the four lineup looks pretty decent. I you know, like, like this let's... team better than last year, but I do have to admit – coming into last year's season, when you looked at that piece of paper with that team we on it, you were like, whoa, what a yeah, team. We were, I can't believe this. We were more pumped. I think this season, um, Dubas sort of went back to what his original plan was and to find depth, true depth players to support um, what exactly he's trying to look for. A hundred percent. I agree with that. And um, you know, this four lineup really looks good. This team overall, I'm not, they are not going to be in first place. I can tell you that much. They're going to be in a hunt for a playoff spot. I, there's a possibility that they may get home advantage, uh, but I think they're going to be in that middle. I, okay, 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 section. okay. I, I can agree with that. I, for a second, I thought you were saying hunt for a playoff spot like they won't. They're, they're a lot. Because there's so many good teams. Spot. That's the I know, problem. But there's there are, so many good teams in the East. Th this team right now, as long as they get in the proper amount of time playing together before the season starts, they are a lock for a playoff spot. I just don't think they're a top three team. They're no. like a fourth or a fifth team. No, Tampa, Florida. I mean, a lot of people are saying Boston. I don't know. Boston. I don't know about Boston I think either. Boston is starting to fade. It's, um, it's Tampa, Florida, uh, probably Washington again, probably Pittsburgh, New York Islanders for sure. Yeah. Like, you're going it, to – it's going to be a battle next season. But those those are the six teams with the Leafs yeah. to me. I don't 
I don't know if Montreal can repeat what they did last Montreal's season. Montreal's not even they've making lost, it. They've lost Shea Weber. Um, they lost Tatar. Um, they lost a lot of good players. They still have a lot of good players, but I just I don't see it. Uh, I think Ottawa is going to play, be better. I think they're going to carry over what they I think did they're going to surprise the people. part of last season. Yeah. I don't um, think they're going to win or, or make the playoffs even, but I think they're going to be a team that's going to upset a lot of teams in their run for the playoffs. Yeah. I think Philly is going to do well. Um, My bottom teams, like the teams that are going to be in the, the fight for the play, I, we've heard about Carolina. Um, the fight for the playoff spot is going to be Boston, Philadelphia, and um, – oh, crap, I forgot the other team now. But it, uh, I, for sure, Boston, Philadelphia, maybe even Washington slips out a bit. Uh, and I'm sure we're, we're, there's going to be teams that we're forgetting. Like, But I think there's going to be a lot of competition next season. I think. Well, we know the, the East, East is, is going to have for sure – Detroit and Buffalo at the bottom. There's a chance if Montreal doesn't have Carey Price and Weber this year, that they're also going to be in that bottom spot. And there's also a chance that Ottawa is going to take it. So, I mean, it's basically a, a fight for from 10th up. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The Rangers um, are okay. I think uh, Jersey moves up a little bit too. Uh, Jersey. I, I, that I was the other team. That's the other team. There you go. It was New Jersey. Um, but yeah, they're definitely going to be in the hunt for a playoff spot. And and I look at this team, and and you know, I'm 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 kind of psyched for it. I'm just a little nervous about uh, the defense again, even though they played well last season, and that was one of the highlights of their team last season. I'm just nervous over the fact that I, nobody I on this team fills that Bogosian. I uh, think, position. as far as defensively from the offensive end, we got better. Yeah. Um, but as, but we are still missing, like I said, you need a veteran defenseman that is going to hit people who can fight and who is not going to be a liability on the defensive end, which is like a Bogosian type of guy. And hopefully we can pull that off. I, I know Dubas is always working on something, right? Yeah, so. I think Dubas, um, I think Dubas is a great GM. I think I know he has his faults. I know, um, he's still learning, but I think. A lot of the stuff he's done has been great. I would argue some of the signings that he's made, uh, you know, with Nylander and the big four, I guess. You can argue with that a little bit. Uh, but you know what? Everybody wants to complain. I don't know, Campus, if you want to comment on this. Everybody wants to complain about the fact that you can't win a team with, like, four players – like Matthews, Tavares, Marner, and Nylander, paying them $40 million. I would argue um, the fact that he was able to sign four caliber players like Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and Tavares on the same team. That's a hell of a, hell of a thing to accomplish at the same time. I know I... he's paying a lot of money. But at the same time, he solidified two solid lines just by having those four guys there. I, and that's, that's, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent. And the only thing that he would have to do is find really good depth players on a yearly basis. And, and you know, that's, he, he's, he's, uh, he has to do a lot of work. I'm just trying to, like, look at both sides of the argument here. I feel like <clears throat> trade-wise, he's made very good trades. Small a contract, small pickups, free agency wise, he's done very well. His biggest issue for me is pulling in people that we actually need on the top end, and at the same time, re-signing people for like the right pay. The, like yeah. the, the Nylander thing is a bit of an oversight, and Marner. Um, he can play on the defensive end. Don't get me wrong, but we both agree we don't want him on the penalty kill. He's offensively talented, but how much of that is playing with Matthews and Tavares and how much of it is his own? I mean, he's obviously talented. I'm not taking away from that, but he is a liability to me in the locker room because he doesn't have any heart. Um, is he worth $11 million on paper if you never win a championship because of him? Like he has his playoff points speak for themselves, right? He has more penalties for flicking the puck over the glass than he has goals. 
Yeah, I still think they're learning. Um, I mean, don't they, get me they, wrong. They have two more years to yes. get their shh together to get this thing done. That's not a lot of time. That's not a lot of time. So and better better get it going. Better get to it going. To me, like I'm not even that mad about Marner. I think if you took the eleven million dollars you spent on Tavares and you spread that out for two centers that at five million dollars, you would have a much better team. Um I would rather have two David Krejci's than one John Tavares. It is what it is. I, it's fine. Team. I mean, let's uh, let's hope that he shows up. Yeah, um, he's stuck with this team. Um, I mean, if you look at it, like you, you're on a team that's got Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, Spezza, Simmons. That's you know I pretty mean, impressive. I'm not even going to say anything I because mean, that a second line that or a third line story that potentially has Makayev and. Uh, Kerfoot to me is one of the best third lines in the NHL already. No, yeah. And so, then not to mention if Kasha shows up to be the player that he was always meant to be, they could be deadly because that he is a guy with, who had a really high ceiling and has a lot of skill. Yeah, he's a wild card. Hopefully he can stay healthy because I know he's had like a number of concussions, which has really, uh, you know, um, hindered his uh, career. But, uh, you know, you know, let's let's see what happens, man. Let's see what happens. You know, I'm over last season. Let's get the stamp season going again. I agree. I'm over last season. No, yeah. even though I get crapped on still, but yeah, so whatever. You know, let it happen. You still didn't win the <laughs> cup, Montreal. Uh, so I mean, thanks for watching, guys. That's all I have. You have anything? No, you're good. All right. Uh, let us know in the comments how you think the Leafs are going to do this year, and uh, peace out. <laughs>